Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Tip Tuesday. Today we're at Bradenton Motorsports Park, and if you watched our previous video, uh, El Toro just went eight. Which is really cool. So, again, like I said in the last video, we wanna use this as a development platform to learn about uh, just general products as well as Coyote specific. So today's Tech Tip Tuesday, we're gonna talk about intake air temp sensors. You know, everybody kind of uses the same 93 Cyclone Typhoon intake air temperature sensor on almost all aftermarket ECUs. And the reason is it's 3 8 NPT, so it easily, you can weld a bung in, screw it in, uh, use the GM connector, and it's just a very standard piece. Uh, While well, that's all good and fine, one of my buddies, uh, Justin Martin, who races uh, the LDR Nova with all the motion stuff on the side of it, uh, recently switched to this new Rife sensor. Now we carry a bunch of Rife sensors, but we hadn't started carrying this one and he told me, you have to switch over to this sensor. What I was seeing with my car, I thought the IATs were really low and really consistent. And what happens is the sensor is actually slow. So it takes a while to send uh, correct data and it's just not accurate. So basically, you know, a car might be in a cell or at a temperature, but the sensor is delayed. So the tune, if it adapts to different temperatures or if you would pull timing in certain areas when it gets hotter, uh, you're not actually getting the correct data to make the correct tuning adjustments. So Rife has this new intake air temp sensor that's a lot faster, a lot more accurate, and uh, we're gonna give it a try today. And we just did a run, an 894 run. So I'm gonna show you some data on that and then we'll switch it over to the Rife one and uh, get some data on that. And we'll be able to see the actual real world difference between the two sensors. And uh, you know, if you got a car that's uh, air to air intercooled like this one and you're at 150, 160 degrees, you know, that's starting to get to be a point where uh, you're concerned and that's what El Toro actually is you know, running right, right at 162 to five degrees intake air temps. We've maxed out the turbo and that can become dangerous in the tuning software. So typically in those cells, you know, if it gets much higher than that, I'm gonna start pulling timing because we don't wanna have uh, tuning issues just because it got so hot. And then in the same sense, we wanna know if it got hot so we can maybe do a different intercooler, a better intercooler. So hopefully this other sensor will show us the real truth, the real accuracy. And if it's actually like 200 plus, we know might be time to take some precautions and uh, make some adjustments so we don't burn this motor up. So I'll show you on the tuning software where we're at before we'll make another pass and I'll show you what, where we're at afterwards. All right guys, so hopefully this shows up. I know we're in the sunlight a little bit. Um, basically this is our run that we just made and you can see the intake air temperature at the beginning of the pass. Uh, this graph right here is our intake air temp. Uh, so we're gonna scroll over and you can see it starts at about 73 to 74 degrees. Um, that's just basically ambient air temperature with whatever the intercooler temperature is. So as we start to, uh, let's just click right here. So that's the beginning of the run. It's up to about 78 degrees. And uh, you can see as we climb, just like you would think, uh, the intake air temp goes up. Um, peaks about 164 degrees. Uh, you can see that right there. And then just kind of planes off and stays right there. So that's what the intercooler is doing. Down track uh, drops way off to 100 or to 75. So that's an accurate description of what that, you know, this, this is the same sensor that Holly and a bunch of different EFI companies use. A lot of people use them on like even stock computer stuff. So it's not a uh, sensor that is new or different. Uh, the first one being the one that we originally put in here. All right, guys, so here are the two sensors. This is the uh, the one that came out of like a 93 Cyclone Typhoon. Um, it also has an open element. You can see the tip is kind of open to the elements there. This one does too. It's just got a little plastic cage around it. You'll actually see guys melt those off of there just because of the material they're made out of there are never meant to be used with methanol and super high temperature stuff. And uh, this is the one I was talking about. It's just a little, sl it's slower just because it's old. I mean, the thing's 20 year old technology at this point, so. This is a uh, 2020 version, uh, comes from Rife and we have them on our website. They have a low IAT and a high. The low goes from, I believe, negative 30 to 300 degrees intake air temps or 330. And then the high goes from zero to 450. So the high would be on like a high demand 
application like that blower car over there those things should never get over 300 i can't even imagine a situation where a car like this would get over 300. actually i take that back a big supercharged centrifugal supercharged non-intercooled deal would definitely get that high but i don't know if they would use it or not so i'm gonna put this one in the nice thing is they use the same gm connector which is very standard on a lot of uh ecus and harnesses so i'll put that in and we'll see what she does we're gonna overlay some data and uh, go from there All right guys, so made the exact same pass, almost down to everything. 894, nine with 150.55 mile an hour. Almost, you know, we didn't change anything in the tune. The conditions are the same, nothing's changed. So we should really get a really great representation of how those two sensors act differently so we can show you the benefit and how much faster it reacts and uh, everything that goes along with it. So let's see what it did. All right guys, so we put the two runs. So this is the old sensor and this is the new sensor. So they look pretty similar, right? Um, if you go through the pass, um, they both start about 73, 74 degrees. Um, everything's calibrated, so we know that things are right. But as you can see, when you go up through here, the, uh, the GM sensor is just very linear. Uh, there's really no changes and it. it's hard to believe that it's so linear, the temperature, uh, when you have variables going on and you have shift in here and stuff like that. So um, if you look at the uh, Rife one, there's actually a, several dips in there, which are pretty believable. But the most important thing is at the top, um, and this is, this is like your true telltale. So this is what I was concerned about. If you have an intercooled car or a boosted car, at the top um, IAT reading is 165 on the GM sensor. Well, this one, which is more accurate and uh, just a, a lot more uh, highly calibrated is 187 degrees. So 22 degrees can be everything. You know, if you're on a limit of what a fuel like, say uh, C16, I think it, it doesn't like to see over like 210, 220, 230, give or take, I'm not, I'm not here for discussion. Um, and you get 20 degrees above that then all of a sudden you have detonation issues you have motors being burnt up and stuff like that and you don't even have data to tell you why that's happening uh here it's you know accurate data and then as you can see in here um after the run so this is after i got out of it peaks right there um and then after the run it just stays there so it's heat soaked um one could say it's just inaccurate in general because it's not following the actual temperature this one is actually delayed at the top so at the end of, uh, it's actually at peak boost right here. Um, and then you can see it falls off, but it's not at peak temperature. So it's actually still gaining temperature after, um, which is pretty accurate. And then it uh, drops off. So maybe on some cars, it's not the, not the end all be all, but uh, for the price of it, you really can't beat it. Well, you're talking about $45 for the for the factory sensor, give or take, and then $69 bucks for 70 um, ish bucks for the Rife sensor. So that, at the end of the day, is only 20 bucks or something like that. But the biggest point I'm trying to make is that a lot of people don't look at data at all, but some people look at data and they believe it. The bad part is if the data is wrong, you can't make accurate decisions and assumptions and stuff like that. So you can't make accurate game time calls to make things better, worse, or otherwise. So having some data that you know is accurate, that you know is fast enough to keep up with the changes being going down the track and everything is a huge thing. And we're just talking about drag racing here. If you're doing circle track or road racing or anything like that, endurance racing, you don't want that thing to come up and stay there um, like that is. You know, in drag racing, it's probably not the biggest problem that it comes up and stays there even after the pass, but if you're road racing or whatever, you don't want it to stay up there because it's pulling power if the temperature is actually dropping down and things are just miscorrelating you're in different timing cells you're in different fueling tables you're in different uh, safety tables and all that type of, type of stuff so you want that stuff to be accurate and accurately represent what the conditions actually are so that the ecu the safeties the tune-up that you made can 
adjust properly. So I hope that was useful to you guys. Uh, it might look like a small thing, but it's actually a very big thing. I've had a lot of cars that are at the top of an IAT range and I'm like, that's safe enough, that's good enough. And then you uh, find something like this and you realize they're actually probably way over that mark where I thought was safe and it's just lucky they didn't burn up or they may have burned up, who knows. Hopefully this is good information for you guys, especially if you're building a new car or you have a car already, add this to it. They're easy to calibrate, uh, readily available. We got them in stock. So hope that is a tool that you guys can put in your bag and start thinking about sensors and data um, that's being delivered to you, especially in pressure and temperature and stuff like that. How accurate are the sensors you're using? Until next time, guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll put a link to purchase these below. And if you have questions, as always, give us a call or email. We'll see you later.